Yum yum. Hello, Pedro here. In this quick flow, I'm going to look into fitting the p-scale so that the resulting spheres don't intersect. So I started to look into this when I was scattering. So here we have Mr. Peakhead and it has uh, scattered here. And the scatter is being controlled by a density attribute, which is being set here in this attribute wrangle. And here, basically, there's some noise. And for example, if I come here to this power parameter, if I put one, you see that there's a more uniform distribution. If I put, like, say, 32, I get a very uh, contrasted distribution. So I guess eight is, is quite fair. It gives me, uh, covers the whole surface uh, with some, some variation in size. So the, the size comes also from the uh, the scatter basically here in the output if we check uh, p scale we get uh, the scaling needed for the copy points to place the spheres and everything sitting well together now while, while i can look at this and sort of imagine these uh, spheres being actual mesh and sort of compressing so that they fit nicely against each other uh, at the moment they are they are intersecting and so i was wondering how can i get the, this sort of fix uh, this setup so that uh, there's no intersection and so this is uh, the re end result I came up with and you can see there's no there's no intersection so let me do a drawing about the thought process of how I went about this so when I first thought about this I thought well if I have say point P I guess I want to fit the scale to the closest point so let's say that the closest point to P is this one and I thought well I guess I, I just get the bisector so the distance between two points divided by two and that will that will do as my p scale and both will uh, will fit nicely now the issue is this with this is that while this uh, point might be the closest one to p uh, this other point might have a point that is closest to it so instead of being p might be this one and so i guess i'll do this by sector here instead okay looking at this i have a problem now in which i have uh, a gap and so I was thinking, well, I guess instead of doing uh, distance divided by two, what I can do is do the distance and then subtract the p-scale of that closest point. So doing distance minus p-scale. And so instead of having the, the radius, the p-scale to be here, it would go here instead. Now, another issue comes with this is that let's say, okay, this is the closest point, but I could have another point in here. And also this point could be the closest one to it. So I guess I'll put... Um, the sphere coming here and now I have an intersection so these two are intersecting even though they are uh, I'm fitting the p-scale to the closest point to them and so now we, I can see that even though that this point here is the closest one when I check against the, the surface actually this one here is is closer so this tells me that I, I won't uh, I won't I can't just check against the closest point I actually have to get a list of points that are probably going to be the you know the most reasonable to, to check against and uh, I'll, I'll have for each of them to do this distance minus the p scale and then get the minimum now I could say okay so this is the where I want to go to and I could just say okay let me do the sphere here and since I'm, I'm applying this to every point, I guess I would do the same here. And then, okay, so let me put this here, here. So this doesn't help me a lot because now instead of having a gap, sorry, instead of having an intersection, I have a gap with the same size. So it's the same thing. So instead of being an intersection, it's a gap. So what I'm going to have to do is instead of, of setting that result, that minimum distance right away, I have to sort of approximate to it so that over uh, a series of iterations, they get closer and closer and probably the end result will be something where they sit around here both of them so let's uh let me just recap um basically first off i'm gonna have to find a list of points for each of them i'm gonna have to check the distance minus the p scale and then from that i'm gonna have to draw the minimum value for, and then with this minimum value i'm sort of i'm gonna have to approximate to it so i'm not gonna set it right away but i'm gonna like lean towards it and then I'm basically going to do this in a loop so that I have multiple approximations and I can get to my, uh, my final result. So let's look into how this is set up in Houdini. So here in Houdini, the first thing that I'm doing is getting the list of points against which I'm going to check distances. And so I have two ways to go about it. And the first one here, which is the first one that I used, was the near points. And basically, you can see that I have this parameter controlling how many points do I get on the list. You can see down here. And I also add one to it, and then I remove the first and the list. This is because 
the first, the closest point to a point is the point itself, but I'm not interested in having the point itself in the list. So that's why I'm adding one and then removing one. And so the, you can see that there's, you know, the, the spheres change as I go up and down. And so let's, let's see what's going on. So if I have one neighbor, uh, one one near point. I see that some some spheres uh, still intersect. So, um, to me, the annoying thing about this solution was that I was never sure about how many points I had to have in total to sort of have all the cases covered. So, for example, if I put one, I get this. If I put two, um, they're still intersecting. You know, I can see that there's intersection going on. So, if I, if I put three, well, this one got fixed, but this one didn't. And if I put four, okay, now this one got fixed as well. Uh, are, are there any other places? Well, these, these two guys are still intersecting. So, if I put five, okay, this got fixed. And so, it, to me, it's like, okay, but what's what's the actual value I should put in there? So, just, you know, things just work. I don't have to go crazy because, of course, I just want to have the... the the list of points to be strict and be about the points that are meaning, meaningful to check against. I don't want to check one point against every point in the mesh, just a, a meaningful list. And so, of course, you know, I can I can put a high value in here and just say, okay, twenty points that should work. But does it work for every case? Eh, not really sure. But you know, so I I, I was wondering how could I do this in a, in a better way and sort of remembered about uh, tetrahedral lies. So with with the with tetrahedral lies, what I can do is I can have the connections. Uh, connect in to the points made for me and so I just need to get the neighbors so I get uh, every point that is connected to the points and that in itself gives me a meaningful list to check against and so the result of that if I come here and I change to that will be this you notice that there's some change here uh, but let's say I put I put five you know and when I and I switch between those you can see there's there's actually some differences, some visible differences going on. If I put, let's say, 20 points here in the neighbor, in the, the near points, so what I get is, is fairly closer to it, like some points changing, but overall it's it's the same. So this, you know, again, uh, the annoying part of not actually knowing how many points do I need. Do I need a hundred? Do I need a thousand? Okay, I'm gonna kill Houdini now. <laughs> but you know, now now they look very similar. But you know, I, I had to put a really uh, high number there. So that's what I liked about the tetrahedralize uh, option is that I didn't have to uh, think about this. I just have it in there and sort of works. Now there are some caveats with tetrahedralize in uh, in that uh, it needs the, the mesh to respect something. So let's look in some of those problems. So I have here a box and uh, this box uh, is going to have uh, eight points, of course. And if I merge it with itself, it's going to become 16. Now I discard the primitives here to so just get the points. And if I apply the tetrahedralize to it, I'm going to get back eight points, not 16. So I I guess there's some fusing going on, and this is this is bad because I get uh, different points uh, afterwards. Instead of 16, I get eight. So the way I went to I went about it to sort of trying to fix that is that I basically get the closest point to the point. So basically, yeah, I get two, but I remove the first one because it's the point itself, and uh, basically I check against that closest point. Is if if the distance to that closest point is less than a certain margin then I add some, some random noise to it. So that I basically take it out of the way. I take both points out of the way. Now, this is not like a bulletproof uh, fix because of course, when I move one point out of the way, well, I might making it bump into another point. So I'm not always sure, but from my testing, like it sort of, sort of works for most cases. And so here I have uh, 16 points again, instead, instead of eight. So that's, uh, that's why I'm having, I have this in here to sort of fix that. The other issue is that um, it doesn't process well, like coplanar points. So I have here this, this grid. And if I feed that here into discarding the primitives and then tetrahedralize, it's going to complain. It's going to tell me, hey, you know, these are like coplanar vertices. I, I can't do anything with it. So the easy fix for this, of course, is to introduce some, some noise. And so if I have here this, this mountain sop and I add some, oh no, sorry, not this here and here. So if I add some some noise to it, I, I, I get the tetrahedral lines to actually work. So if I put this to zero, nothing happens. But if I had a slight amount of noise, I get something out of the tetrahedral lines. So th these are the two the two gotchas to consider when, when using the tetrahedral lines. But other than that, uh, quite uh, quite happy about, uh, about using it. So, okay, I got my list of points, in this case with the tetrahedral lines, for example. And now what, 
what am I going to, to do to it? So here comes the, the loop where I'm going to approximate. And so basically here I'm getting the, the list of points, I'm getting the p-scale, and I'm getting an array where I'm going to store the, the distance comparison. And so here I iterate over each point and basically I get its ID, I get its position, I get the distance to it, I get that point P scale, and I do the, the distance minus the P scale as I shown in the drawing. Here I put uh, sort of like a cap so that um, I guarantee that the point is not only positive but there's some scaling value because if I put zero you know then it, it becomes quite hard. And I also uh, basically then just just store it into the list then I get the minimum from the list and I approximate to it So I don't actually set the scale to be equal to the minimum value that I found I, I Interpolate to it. So I have the current P scale and I interpolate to the new P scale by 0.7 and then here, the, this, this filter, uh, this epsilon set, etc. It's just me trying to optimize. To be honest, I didn't notice a big, a big difference with this optimization. But so basically what I'm doing is that I'm checking the current P scale with the new P scale. And if they're very similar, you know, I, this, since this is a scaling factor, I divide both of them. And if, if they're closer to one, well, I just add them to this group called ignore. And so here you can see that I'm basically not running this on this, this ignore group. And so by the end of the iterations, you can see that I have this ignore group matching up the amount of points that I have. And I also have this stop condition so that, for example, let me put 12 in here. So if the number of points is equal to the number of points in the group called ignore, just stop. And so here uh, it's, it's stopped. So yeah, this allows me, to, for example, know that if I go really high, let's say a thousand iterations, I can, I can rest assured that whenever everything is done, this is just going to stop. So it's a way to... Uh, to also not have to think about how many iterations do I need to approximate this. Just put some high value, and when when it's done, it's done. And so both of these sort of sort of work towards that. Anyways, you can see that I have here the the iterations. You can see how, what's going on. So with zero, uh, nothing happens. But if I go with one, then there's some changes. If I go with two. Okay, so basically, they they go back and forward, scaling back and forward until they all fit together. So that's. Um, that's what's going on. And so that's it. That's uh, the gist of, of the setup. Uh, let me know how, what you think, if, if you find it useful, if you use it for something. Uh, initially, I, I thought about this for just for the scattering, but then I noticed that this actually can be an interesting building block in assessing you know, what's, what's the radius that this point has that allows me to do something to it and not intersect into other points uh, space. So if, even if I feed the, the pig head directly into this, you notice that I have all the points in the pig head also getting a P scale, even though there's no initial P scale, like here with the, with the scatter where there's the P scale, there's no P scale in here, but that's generated by the setup. And you can see that now I have a uh, sphere that don't intersect. I also have the same on a volume. So here's the, the pig head with some noise in a volume and so basically this this is like the interior detail while the scatter is like the outer detail and if i have both of them you can see that now i not only have uh, spheres on the outside i also have spheres on uh, on the inside of the mesh and to top it off i have here this dot network with a very basic uh, pop point so nothing fancy and if i activate it you can see that um, as the spheres as the points get displaced the spheres uh, grow. Now, of course, let's say that you might uh, not be happy that because, of course, if I if I come here, let's say, and I, I grab a point, right, with this with this setup, uh, if I come here and I grab a point, let me check the result. Uh, you know, this 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 guy is gonna gonna start to grow, uh, start to grow a lot, and maybe maybe you don't want that. You know, it's like eh. Do I really want that sphere to be that big? Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. You know, it's like eh. So you can always put, um, you know, you can always clamp it uh, here. You can say, well, I want this to be clamped between, let's say, a minimum value of 0 0.01 and also 0 0.5 or something like that. And so, you know, even though that sphere is is being moved, uh, you can always uh, sort of restrict that. So I, you can see as I move next to the other spheres, uh, it get it ad adapts, but once it goes outside too much, it sort of stops. So it's um, you can you can restrict that. But I thought it was um, it was a cool effect, and so that's uh, that's why I went uh, with it. So that's it. Cheers. See you next time. Yum yum.